So Bitcoin just got awesomer. Upgrade. Bitcoin got a huge upgrade, and this is massive because fun Snapple fact of the day, it's almost impossible to upgrade Bitcoin. The last time that Bitcoin got an upgrade was in August of 2017, so almost four years ago. And this is because Bitcoin has five pillars of decentralization, which means five different groups of people have to come together and agree to something. And that's the miners, the developers, the nodes, the users, and the businesses. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about about money because it's gonna get really nerdy. Let me put on my glasses and uh, let's talk about it. You're probably gonna fall asleep by the end of this video, if not the middle, but I promise it's gonna be super useful. I'll tell you exactly what this upgrade is. It's called Taproot. I'll show you exactly what it does and what it's going to do to Bitcoin's price. Exciting times, let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance and stay for the nerdistry. And the first thing you might be wondering is, hold on a minute, Andre. How is it that Bitcoin can upgrade? Doesn't it defeat the whole purpose of having Bitcoin if there is some developer out there who can upgrade their wallet and give themselves an infinite amount of Bitcoin? Oh, is that a Bitcoin I see? Yeah, I'll print some Bitcoin for me, and some here, and some there. I think I'm gonna make some more. Mm. Ooh. Am I a joke to you? You can't technically code more Bitcoin for yourself and put it into your wallet unless the other players on the entire Bitcoin network, the other pillars, would agree to the same thing. So it would have to make financial sense for everybody. So if some group of developers decided to magically upgrade their wallet, it wouldn't really be passed by the other miners. And the reverse is true. If some miner decided to make more Bitcoin for himself, then the other miners and the other developers and nodes and users and businesses would signal that that's not a change they would agree to and it would never happen. So Bitcoin is a lot less like computer software. And if anything, it's more like the US Congress where no one agrees to anything and nothing ever gets done. So here's what the Taproot upgrade is. There's three main upgrades that are in Taproot. And one of those upgrades is an upgrade to privacy. And this is really big because for the longest time, people that were using Bitcoin thought that they could just pay for things completely privately and anonymously and just disappear. But the reality is Bitcoin is pseudo anonymous, which means I will use a card trick any opportunity I get and that the FBI has entered the chat. Where's my money? This is how the government was able to follow the money and trace it from dark side and was able to eventually confiscate it. So if you're wondering to yourself, well, why does that even matter, Andre? I just hodl Bitcoin, I don't spend it, I'm not a criminal, I don't care about privacy. The reason that this is important is because right now there are other cryptocurrencies with several billion dollars in market cap size that focus on one specific feature. And one of those features is privacy. A good example is Monero, which has a market cap of over $4 billion. That's really big. Because right now, if you wanna send Bitcoin to someone privately and secretly, you have to use something called coin mixing and coin shuffling, which is just a fancy way of splitting up your one Bitcoin transaction into many smaller ones that then get mixed in and shuffled around with all the other transactions. Now, this makes it hard to follow the money but eventually you can reverse engineer it and piece together the puzzle and see where that money came from. And that's why Bitcoin is not 100% private and anonymous. So a good way of thinking about this is like, if I was some random dude on YouTube trying to show you an annoying card trick, my goal would be to control your card without you knowing about it, right? But the problem is, if I'm shuffling cards like this, you'd get very suspicious, right? What's the matter? Everything's totally normal. I'm not controlling your card. It's totally in the middle of the deck. I don't know where your card is. You'd be like, yeah, everything is totally normal. With the Taproot upgrade though, you'd have no way of knowing that these shuffling techniques are even happening in the first place. And yes, there's a magic trick analogy here too because this video is one giant magic special. But if this Bitcoin transaction represented a single output where it looks as though it was going into one place, the reality is it's not actually in the middle. The shuffling has already happened because that card is now on top. That's basically the taproot upgrade. And here's a second upgrade to Bitcoin that's happening. So this next upgrade is called Schnorr Signatures. You know, when you're snoring, but then you suddenly have the urge to want to start signing stuff. I don't know. I'm just having fun with it. You know how hard it is to create a YouTube video about Bitcoin that is so technical without putting myself to sleep? It's impossible. This upgrade allows the first upgrade to happen, but it also has a few tricks up its own sleeve. So 
The next few minutes of this video is gonna get ridiculously complicated, so I don't blame you if you fall asleep. But when Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, he designed it with something called the Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm in mind, or the ECDSA. So if you ever wondered, how is it that I can send my Bitcoin to someone else without that someone else knowing my private key? Like how does Bitcoin even know that it's sending from my wallet? Can I send Bitcoin from somebody else's wallet? And the reason that it knows is because of something called the private key. Your private key is what is used to create your unique digital signature. Now your public key, which is what you use to pay or get paid, like for example, here's mine, in case you're feeling generous, <laughs> is what's used to verify your unique digital signature. That's how you can send Bitcoin to someone else without that someone else knowing your private key. Because if they did, they would also have access to your output, AKA your wallet. So a way easier way of thinking about this is kind of like signing a check. Remember doing that? Me neither, <laughs> but Satoshi designed Bitcoin to work kind of like signing a check. Once you sign that check, that's how people know that money came from you. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, hold on, if people can sign a check, couldn't I just replicate their signature since that's public information? The answer is no, they can't because your unique signature comes with your unique transaction history. And if somebody else tried to use your signature for their new transaction, the miners would reject that transaction because it would not line up with what they had on the public ledger that is the Bitcoin network. That's how Bitcoin gives you unique access to your coins without giving other people the same exact access. If you understood all that, high five. <laughs> if you didn't, just press the J button a couple times, but that's the technical explanation. Now let's talk about, in plain old English, how this actually helps Bitcoin, because there's two major ways. The first major way this upgrade really helps Bitcoin is because it's gonna help us create smart contracts. Finally, this is huge. Remember, smart contracts lock your money in until certain conditions are met. And when they're met, it's gonna unlock the money and then distribute it. So for example, if you smash the like button and subscribe to my channel, I will make more card tricks. Unsub, delete, conditions are met. So Ethereum is obviously really good at doing this. But Bitcoin, not so much. Why is that? One of the reasons is because of the ECDSA digital signature structure. With this new Schnorr signature structure, it allows us to condense and compress the multiple digital signatures and the multiple transactions under a single united one, which allows the complexity of smart contracts to actually be able to be handled on Bitcoin efficiently and cheaply. And because it's united, it's also less data that gets sent to the blockchain. Because there's less data in the blocks, that's less money we have to bribe to the miners. That's what makes it possible. And because these transactions are united, it helps us improve the privacy, which means you don't end up looking like dark side when you're trying to shuffle your transactions and be like, nothing to see here, totally normal transaction. <laughs> the other way that this upgrade helps is because it changes Bitcoin's scripting language, which basically allows developers to upgrade the network easier in the future. But who cares, Andre? Ain't nobody got time for that. How does it help me? <laughs> this is the second way that this upgrade really helps. And this is arguably the best and the biggest way that people are talking about. And that is the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is something that Bitcoin has been perpetually and forever 18 months away from getting, but it's arguably the most important feature that Bitcoin can get. And it's basically what will allow Bitcoin to become a real currency that we can use for the rest of the world. A currency that's cheap and fast to use. That's because right now, Bitcoin can do about five transactions per second, which is not nearly enough for the rest of the world. And that's in comparison to the big boys like Visa, which can do 65,000 transactions per second. So a completely different ball game. And this is because centralized databases are way faster and cheaper to use than decentralized blockchains. So then the question becomes, how do you solve this problem without changing the underlying fundamental structure of what makes Bitcoin decentralized and secure? So layer two is that solution. Remember when you used to walk into a bank and then your dollar would be able to claim a slice of gold? Me neither. 
But life used to be like that though. And so we created these pieces of paper to represent this gold because pieces of paper were a lot easier to transport and divide and store and it was just cheaper and faster to use. So that's what we did. And in the case of Bitcoin, the layer two implementation is called the Lightning Network. And the way that it works is if I wanna send money to you, we would open up a channel together, sort of like a text message window. And then we would transact on this derivative money, money that's not actually real money, but money that still represents some derivative form of money. Wouldn't that recreate the current fractional reserve banking system though? Hopefully not, because hopefully those channels would be governed by smart contracts, but that's a whole separate video. But either way, that's how we do it. That's the solution. And before we can do all this complexity on the Lightning Network, we have to make the base layer, layer one, that is Bitcoin, be more efficient, cheaper, and be able to handle smart contracts in the first place. So this upgrade goes live sometime in November. And when it does, here's what I think will happen to the price. Drum roll. Nothing will probably happen to the price. I know, it's a bummer, and I want Bitcoin to go to the moon as much as anyone else, but the truth is, this is more of an infrastructural upgrade, and most people are just not nerdy enough like us to be watching these YouTube videos to really even understand what any of it means. Because the truth is, it's like working and improving the engine of a car. Yes, you can improve it, but you have to put the engine back, you have to fix the car, and that takes some time. So as the developers adopt this technology and use it to build out the lightning network, which is what will drive adoption, that's when the value will go up, but that will take some time. The thing that truly drives Bitcoin's price is a positive narrative, a good story. Like it gets adopted by a country and it becomes a national currency like with El Salvador or Elon decides to have a good day and tweet something nice. <laughs> That's really what drives Bitcoin's price in the short term. So maybe we'll see a small spike, but I don't see it being anything major. But if you're somebody who uses Bitcoin, then it will become slightly faster, slightly cheaper, more private and more decentralized. As always, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and go get up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin using this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre. Once you do, go get two free stonks with Weeble. When you deposit $100 using the link down below, you can get two free stocks, each of which can be valued up to whatever random amount they're promoting at the time. I have no idea. And once you get them, go track them automatically with the spreadsheet linked down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.